The Gate Theatre's production of Bedroom Farce by Alan Eckborn begins previewing this Friday. Directed by Alan Stanford, one of the cast members is a veteran of Irish stage and screen, Stephen Brennan, and this production will mark Stephen's 80th production on the Gate Theatre stage. Having just appeared in My Cousin Rachel, the Gate could be called Stephen's second home, as Evelyn O'Rourke discovered when she met up with him and the rest of the company amid the hustle and bustle of final preparations. How are you? Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. How are you keeping? I'm keeping all right. You've just come straight from rehearsals. Just finished a hard day at the office, yeah. It's, uh, it's a bit of a building site at the moment, but it'll all make sense eventually. It's very hard to get three bedrooms onto the gate stage because, as you can see, there isn't an awful lot of width beyond what you actually see. So uh, we have our wonderful designer there, Eileen Dis, who's managed to get three bedrooms onto the stage. So she's a bit of a miracle worker. So this is a stage that you know so well. Yes. In fact, I feel like I've been living here. I was very happy with this show that when we were rehearsing it, that uh, there are three double beds on the set in the rehearsal room there. So I was able to finish rehearsals, have my tea, get into bed and go to sleep for an hour. Get up, do the show. And I don't really know why I bothered going home at night because I felt like I'd only left five minutes when I had to come back in again and start rehearsals. So, so Stephen, we're going to step up the side here onto the famous gate stage. Here we are. Here we are. Many great productions have happened on this stage, going all the way back to Hilton Edwards and Michael McLeamor in, I think it was 1928. It's OK, Alan Stanford and is standing beside yes, you, mouthing at you. Prompting me. And then that was the company that my father joined in the 40s and 50s. So we go back a bit in this theatre, we Brennans, then of course my sister Barbara and Jane and... I think my mother worked here a little bit. With, uh, with, with you, was it, maybe? Yeah, with maybe yeah, Mr Stanford, yes? Yeah, several times. Of course she did. She did a good few shows. Um, she in was my, my mother in Pygmalion when I played Higgins. Yeah, and that's not today nor yesterday. No. So, Stephen, you have been coming in and out of this theatre then since you were very small. Uh, I first worked here with somebody close to us again. Uh, play. We worked together, I think it was our first play here, both yeah. of us, in 1972, was it? That would be about right. It was, it, it was the Barrett's of Wimpole Street. Yes. And... and uh, Ray McAnally frightened the life out of us all, and he, yeah. he played Browning and directed it. And, and we Godfrey all played Quigley chess because Ray and Godfrey Quigley both played chess, so we spent yes. most of the play in the green room playing chess. Yeah, it was mandatory. And in mandatory. fact, I won the Flush Cup. Well, there you are. Which was named after the little dog in the play. Anyway. So that first production then has led to how many appearances? Well, that was what we called BC, which was before Colgan. So that was, I think that was the only show I did here, BC. And then AC... I've done, I believe I've, somebody said I've done 80 or something. I did, of course, the first production that Alan directed here, Romeo and Juliet. And some of my favourite ones are the big ones. So, um, Serrano de Bergerac was a great, again, Alan directed that. Uh, but it was a wonderful, big piece of theatre, five-act play. And then we did uh, Present Laughter, which I've done a lot of Coward, and so has Alan. And uh, I wonder who directed that. Same one who directed Private Lives, I think. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Although we were in that one together as well, in a different production here. Yeah, we're starting to repeat ourselves. It's very worrying. Because he and I go back to 1970. And do you remember where it was? We are two of the only living actors to have survived dying in the hospice in Harold's Cross. <laughs> he played the dame in a Christmas pantomime that they put on together. My sister was in it, and I was 13, and I played a character called Squint. And we died. <laughs> it was, well, it was a miserable was little hall with a 40-watt bulb outside it. Complete and unmitigated Christmas disaster. Talk to me about this stage and what this room offers. What is the magic that this place has for you? It, the room itself is, is a wonderful room because it, there's a lovely acoustic in it. You don't have to roar. You can take it down quite low. And it was originally an assembly room, actually, and the stage used to be down at that end. Can you give me an example, then, of what level you would have to pitch at to reach the back row? I could probably be heard now at the back. I'm just uh, supporting my voice a little bit more. But that... Uh, Pat, can you hear me? Perfect. Loud and clear. There you are, you see. Can we go and hook around off stage yeah, and see what's sure. hidden Bye-bye. here? You actually can't get past there. I think there's a door here. Hang on. Yes, here's the door. So here yes. we are. This little passageway is very often used for quick changes and things. And then it brings you over to the stage manager's desk where she calls the show. Do you want to go round to the new wing or to the green room? Or to I love the idea of having a look at the green room because yeah. I imagine you've had some interesting nights there. This is the green room here. 
So just to get a sense of it then, the green room here is looking right over onto Cassidy's Hotel across the way into yeah. Cavendish Row. With these wonderful big tall Georgian windows, um, two of them are in the green room. There's another one in the, in the dressing room next door, and there's another one in my dressing room, which is next door to that. We'd assemble here for notes, you know, when we're doing previews. People hang out here during the show. We can go down to the bar. Unfortunately, the bar isn't open, but we can go down there. This is um, the second foyer. It's just off the bar. And this is a foyer that is dedicated to Mr. Beckett. You can see pictures of all um, his productions that we did in the Beckett Festival. We did all 19 plays. There's my long-suffering mother in the bin there in Endgame. I played Lucky, and I was also in one of these urns in a play called Play. And uh, my poor sister Jane was in a head brace doing a play called Not I, in which you just see the mouth. So my entire family were tortured on behalf of Mr Beckett. Then finally, this theatre, The Gate, it is your 80th appearance on the stage here. I'm just wondering if you can anyway sum up what The Gate means to you. Well, it's also given me a livelihood since 1988 because we have to survive, you have to keep going, you have to make money. And, you know, yes, we, we are compelled to do what we do. I suppose in the arts you, you kind of have to do it and you find a way of doing it. As somebody said to me, you don't give this business up, it gives you up. And uh, <laughs> I haven't been found out yet, but uh, hopefully we'll go on for a few more years yet. Evelyn O'Rourke there with actor Stephen Brennan ahead of his 80th appearance on the Gate Theatre stage in Alan Ackburn's production, in Alan Ackburn's play, Bedroom Farce, and congratulations to Stephen Brennan on that achievement. The show uh, previews from this Friday and then opens next Thursday, January the 31st. More information on gatetheatre.ie.